what is a forensic pathologist, Marianne? And what are the main responsibilities and activities of your work? So a forensic pathologist determines the cause of death of a person who dies violently, publicly, um, unnaturally, or without the supervision of a physician. And then we also determine the manner of death. So you only have five choices with manner, homicide, accident, suicide, natural, or undetermined. So a medical examiner is a licensed physician who specializes in forensic pathology. A coroner may or may not be a doctor. Um, they are generally a person who is often an elected or an appointed position. And what they do is decide, look the case and decide whether further investigation is needed, including an autopsy. They usually do not perform, perform autopsies themselves. Um, the other things that forensic pathologists are responsible for, of course, we perform, we perform autopsies. We issue death certificates. We go to court on cases of uh, you know, deaths that involve criminality. Sometimes we go to court for civil stuff. Um, sometimes we perform exhibitions. I review old cases. I review cold cases. Um, one thing I like about the job is that I get to do something different every single day. I am not a person who tolerates boredom well. Uh, hijinks tend to ensue if I get bored. So one, one of the things that attracted me to forensic pathology was the variety of what I get to do. What percentage of, of all of these things do you find that you do more? Is there kind of like a, a sort of even divide where you're doing, you know, at least three autopsies a week and then, you know, going to court is maybe once a month just to kind of give everyone an idea of the split of the position? So it sort of depends on what your work structure is. I, I don't have a full-time job. I only work as what's called a per diem position. So I fill in at office, a couple different offices a few days a month. Um, there is such a shortage of forensic pathologists that you can pretty much write your own ticket for whatever kind of work structure. I mean, if you want a full-time job, there's plenty open. If you want to work a couple days a month, you can do that too. Um, so the, the, how much I cut is up to me. The going to court part is less up to me. So I've had years where I've gone to court as many as eight or 12 times. I've had years where I didn't get called. Um, you know, I have a trial next week, but because of COVID, I haven't been to court in over a year. So that part is sort of out of your control. Um, and it also depends on, you know, if you're a person who, not every forensic pathologist does private work, private autopsies or private consultations or exhumations or cold cases. That's sort of up to you if that's something that you're interested in. I really like cold case work. So I do that frequently or as much as I can. Um, it's not for everybody. So run us through a typical day as a forensic pathologist. And I know that's a challenge, as you mentioned, it could be very different, especially in the type of position that you're in. Try to give us a maybe a week and Let's talk about the small things like talking to families and the paperwork. And let's give everyone a really good idea of, of what your actual day-to-day -day is like. <clears throat> My days are sort of divided into days I go into the morgue and cut and days that I don't. So on the days that I go to the morgue, um, the first thing that I'll do is either my morgue manager will call me in the morning and tell me what cases that we have that day, or depending on the office, I'll look at the electronic system online and see what cases came in and what's assigned to me by the chief medical examiner. And so that can be anywhere from you know, one to five cases, depending on the office and how difficult they are and how many assistants I have working with me that day. So when I get to the office, usually you know, my assistants will give me uh, you know, a basic lowdown on what I've got. Um, if we have anybody who has penetrating injury, like stab wounds or, or bullet wounds or is severely decomposed, we'll run them through the x-ray, make sure they don't have any bullets or anything else in them. Um, then what my assistants will usually do, we'll take the bodies of the body bags, start, start taking photographs, we'll undress the bodies and do an external examination. So I'll note things like your hair color, eye color, height, weight, scars, tattoos. Yes, that embarrassing tattoo you got in college is going to walk court. <laughs> Just keep that in mind, please. Um, what do you do when someone is fully tattooed though? Oh, I, for, well, usually I grumble and then I write them all down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then what we'll do is um, take toxicology samples. Um, I'll note any injuries, we'll get photographs. I'll do an internal examination, which is actually the Y incision where we take out um, each organ either individually or en bloc, and I'll examine either organs or organ systems. 
Um, after we're all done, my assistants will clean up the body, sew it back up, put it back in the body bag so that the uh, funeral director can collect the body at their convenience. Um, then I will write a draft report, which sort of lists everything I found and my, my early conclusions. And then I'll sit around for each case for you know, something like two to six weeks, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for toxicology and other testing to come back. One thing you can count on in forensic pathology is there's always a lot of paperwork, always. So at any given time, I'm juggling anywhere from 15 to 50 cases that are open. Sometimes more during COVID, it was sometimes a lot more. Um, and so I keep a spreadsheet and as my results come back in, I'll either finalize them or you know, come up with a different plan depending on what the information uh, that I have is. So on the days that I'm not in the morgue, that can be paperwork reviewing cold cases for local law enforcement. And somebody asked on the chat, what makes me prefer cold cases versus, versus current cases? I like cold cases because I it's interesting to see, you know, what the standard of the time was. Um, and I like to read other people's work because sometimes there's, you know, phraseology or ways of saying things that, you know, you can say, oh, I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that next time that comes up. Um, to give you an example, I recently, a couple of years ago, I testified on a case that was a murder from 1968. And it was a multiple gunshot wound murder. And there was not a single close up photo of any of the bullet wounds because that just wasn't the standard at the time in that particular area of the country. It's really, it's sort of fascinating to see the evolution of forensic science through cold case work. You know, what was the standard at the time? Did you keep a DNA sample? Did you keep a blood sample? Did you keep the clothing? You know, where is it? Every, every case like that is a little mystery and I really enjoy that.